Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Boy, it's such a pleasure to come into your home. And thank you for watching and thank you for all your wonderful letters and cards. I really got some nice ones yesterday and I just want to thank you. I uh, want you to know we love you very much and feel a great connection. So thank you for your response to the program. I think you're going to be very glad you tuned in today. I have a very special guest, as you are aware, I think way, way back before I did this program, I was uh, one of the first ones to address the homosexual issue in the church uh, on Christian television. And uh, the Lord has sent us through the years some wonderful testimonies. Uh, you know, we serve a God who can do anything. He can change you. He can make you brand new. And uh, even no matter what your past was, maybe you were very, very damaged, but we have a a father in heaven that can fix all that. Um, and so I'm thankful for the ones we've had in the past, but the one I have today, I would have to say is um, totally unique. Ken Williams is from uh, Northern California and uh, he was in the gay lifestyle and has written a book called The Journey Out. We'll be talking about that. And I think it would be a good reference for anybody say Sunday school teacher, youth leaders, pastors, and all that. And we'll be talking about that. But today, God took this man, and he's today a pastor, a husband, four children. God has given him a wonderful full life. And that's the same God you can cry out to. So I'm anxious for you to meet Ken Williams. And I'm going to join Stephanie. My favorite squash is spaghetti squash. You know, there are several kinds, and I like all of them, really, but the spaghetti squash is the best, and we're making a very special dish with that, so I think you will want it. And uh, before I join her, though, I want to remind you that we are viewer-supported, and we thank you for that. I had a viewer call me yesterday, and uh, over the phone gave a wonderful donation for the program, and I don't have the vocabulary to tell you how thankful I am and grateful, but God bless you for it. Information is coming up on your screen. If God kind of taps your shoulder and says, uh, give this program a little help, you can write to us at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or call 1-800-229-0059, and um, you can give either way. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, Stephanie, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. yes. <laughs> I got really excited yesterday and I ran in her office and a wonderful viewer is supporting us uh, beautifully, big time. So, doesn't this look good? So good. Mm -hmm. So we took a, a spaghetti squash, mm -hmm. we cut it in half, we sprayed a baking pan, we put a little of olive oil on the spaghetti squash, squash, put it on the pan, we baked it for 30 to 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then when you take it off and you let it cool, you take a fork and you can strip it into, and that's it looks all like been spaghetti. Done. Yeah, that, it really is. Yeah, it's, okay, so I have, it calls for four cloves of garlic. I did six because <laughs> I love garlic. And we have spinach and we have Parmesan and pine nuts. So, pine nuts. Yes, and this is going to be my lunch, so I'm very, and, very hungry um, right now. I kind of splurged on the pine nuts. I, I've tried all these years to save money for Christian <laughs> television. I thought, I'm going to go all out. All out on the pine nuts. Pine nuts are expensive. They are. Yeah. So, so always, always watch for walnuts, pecans, yeah. pine nuts when they're on sale. Because you can put them in the freezer mm -hmm. and, and save them. Mm -hmm. So always look for them on sale because th they are expensive. And very, very good for you. We want to do a little chopping yeah. there and yeah. I'm going to put spinach go in here. Go ahead and put that in. Yeah, we're going to get it wilting, mm -hmm. which That's you know, this will wilt down to nothing. Fresh spinach. <laughs> I'm getting ready for Christmas. So, can I just mention my blog while I'm waiting for the spinach? Yes. So, I started a blog. It's called Cooking, Crafts, and Camaraderie. And yes. I'm sharing all kinds of th money saving tips. I'm saving, re sharing recipes. I'm sharing crafts. Um, so, it's just stephanieoneal.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can sign up to be an email subscriber. Yesterday, I mm -hmm. sent out to my email <clears throat> subscribers a free Christmas planning printout. Excellent. Yeah, because it's because if you want to be less stressed, you just have to plan and be organized. You have to write it down too. Lists, lists are my friends. So yeah, I sent that out to my subscribers yesterday. I hope it's helpful. Yes, and uh, that's on the screen. Uh, take it because uh, she'll be talking about homekeepers and other things on there too. Yes. Um, 
This dish looks beyond so yep. good. I'm going to take the spinach you cut up for me. Oh, I think you're going to be jealous of go. me. Oh, okay. Me or them? You. Oh, okay. Especially me. you. <laughs> I was at Costco yesterday yes. and they had the Christmas out. Yes. I got the spirit sister walking Listen, through there. I'm like a little kid in a candy in store when I walk in and there's Christmas stuff out. My eyes is there so anything exciting. quite like Costco? I guess because of the volume. Oh, Sam's Club. And I mean, a lot of places have their stuff out and now the early. Trees up and I know it drives people crazy, but it makes me happy because I'm a planner and I want to get stuff done. It's not bacon. Just that. This, this is been a bacon. rough year for America. Yeah, and, and let us have our happy. Christmas is going to be a. Just let us escape. have our happy. So you, can you put them in in this order? Does it matter? I, I, I mean, for the most part, I'm doing it as the recipe calls for it. So that was bacon. <laughs> The spinach. You're going to do it like the recipe says. Yeah. Well, I'll do that here. At home, I just do whatever I want. Yeah. Look at this yumminess. Oh, I love, I love spaghetti, spaghetti squash. squash. Be good. And then we also have Parmesan cheese and pine nuts. I'm going to put a little salt and pepper to season now, it. Now, do you put the put this on the top or do you... The pine nuts go on the top. The cheese is going to go on in one second. I know oh. we have a great guest to get to, so I'm trying yes, to we do. speed cook here. Salt. Mm-hmm. Oop, not that one. That would be a disaster. I'm excited about your blog, though, because um, she gets so full of ideas and she searches for them. Yes. And um, this is one way <laughs> you can vent. Yes. Well, I just <laughs> let it all out. And I just want to share, listen, everything that I've gone through getting debt free, I want to share all of that because to me right now it's common knowledge like it's I got it but other people need help I know so I want to share all of that Christmas I mean I'll share Christmas 365 yeah, days a year be, if you uh, let me Christmas all year <laughs> but also um, when you look at the big picture in America thank God for Dave Ramsey he oh, has he yes. has really been a blessing yeah but um, I think the most Americans think that the way you do finance is when you get 16, they send you a credit card in the mail. Yes, And that's scary. the way it works. Yeah, and that's not how it works. You can, listen, I was double upside down in my house and tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt. Mm -hmm. I am debt free, no mortgage, no car payment, no credit card. Okay, y'all, let is give possible. Her a hand. Thank you. <laughs> Well, it was, I, I mean, it was all, I it was all it God. I hope it inspires other people. To, yes, hold on, let me put pine nuts. Okay. There. All Look right. how beautiful. There's one for you. Thank you. Yeah, this mm. is going to be my lunch. I'm hungry. I waited. Mm-hmm. So good? It's one of the best things we've ever fixed. Uh, okay. Are you good? Don't mm -hmm. talk with food in your mouth. <laughs> right? My mother taught me not to. <laughs> okay, don't, you go now. I'll taste. Don't fault my mother. What do you say? That is delicious, mm -hmm. and that tastes like spaghetti. Mm -hmm. It really does. A little different texture, but the taste is good. Yeah, it's mm. delicious. Maybe it's that extra garlic you put I'm in. I'm so glad I waited to eat lunch. Well, it's, the name of the recipe is Parmesan Spaghetti Squash Spinach and Bacon with Pine Nuts. Just say Spaghetti Squash. We'll know what it is. With Pine Nuts. Uh-huh. Give okay. Wanda a little bit more. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, and... Uh, if you want it, the information is coming up on your screen. Get it the way that's best for you. And I want you to meet my guest, Ken Williams. So stay right there. I think you're going to be riveted to the set. Stay there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, I want to welcome uh, my guest, Ken Williams, and what a wonderful, wonderful testimony he has. I hope, hope you'll sit down, you know, grab yourself a cup of tea and uh, try to clear your mind. And we need some uplifting, wonderful news today. This has been a rough year for America. And, um, but I got good news for you. God didn't go anywhere. He's, he's still around and his promises are still yay and amen. And he's still working in the lives of people, making them brand new and giving them a new direction, which is exactly what he did for my new best friend, Ken Williams. <laughs> I'm is honored that not to be true? your new best friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, 
I was so intrigued with your, maybe one of the most dramatic uh, visitations of mm -hmm. God on a human being, mm. almost like Saul on the road to Damascus or something, mm -hmm. that you could be going this way and he turned you around. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just want you to tell the audience, mm -hmm. just tell them your story. Yeah. Well, I, um, yeah, I'm shocked by my story too. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't think I would be living the life that I am now. You did come from a Christian home, right? I did. I did. That's one of the, I think, painful parts of my story, mm -hmm. and, or the confusing parts. It's mm -hmm. because, okay, you're raised in a Christian home, got saved at eight years old, and I'm, I'm telling you, I wept over the fact that Jesus had died for my sins at eight years old. Mm -hmm. And so following him, I'm in church several times a week. My family committed. And then when you find yourself at you know, 13 years old or so, and you realize, wow, I'm, I'm not girl crazy like the other boys. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm more boy crazy. That's very disturbing, right? Because I didn't sign, I didn't, I didn't ever ask to be different than all the other kids. You know, I, I never signed up for that. So what happened, Lord? And you, you start crying out to God, you know, you're saying, God, you know, please change this. What's wrong with me? All those things. And, and nothing happens. Like that's, that's how I started out. Was there any kind of a violation? Yeah, but I think the average person that ha is dealing with this stuff doesn't probably connect all those dots. Mm -hmm. They're not sitting there thinking, oh, well, this, of course, would have caused me to feel this way. And so for me, I was exposed to um, awful, hardcore gay pornography when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. I had just gotten saved. I'm playing in a field with a friend. He opens a box that we find, and there's hardcore gay pornography in there. And, and the, your audience, almost none of them, hopefully, would have any clue what is in there and I won't describe it but let me just tell you it's not just two people showing love to each other it's not even um, two males expressing themselves sexually I saw very degrading dishonoring horrible things and it caused me to lose respect for men, for men I didn't understand why a man would treat another man that way add to that I was always the scrawny skinny kid which you know no no young boy wants to be you that weren't no, you weren't the football player I was not the football player and so it was hard to keep up and I, I was called from birth to be a pastor so it's like I already started out in life wanting to talk deeply with people well your average young boy is not wanting to talk deeply he's wanting to knock stuff over or climb stuff and so for all of those different reasons I was missing my male peer you know I wasn't jiving with my male peers and um, not feeling the, the masculine affirmation that I should have, should have been getting from my community, from my, my parents and things like that. I, I, my dad loved me uh, and I loved him, but again, we, we had different interests. And so it was hard for him to connect with me. And so you put all that together and, and uh, I, did, I also should mention that so often pornography seen like that, particularly when a group of kids discover it, then there's some sex play that unfortunately happens after that. And that got, um, that happened to me um, by the other boy as a result of what happened there. And so now I've got shame going on, right? Very deep levels we of shame. We can't overestimate that, can we? Not at all. It totally it can direct a person's life and, and without them even realizing it. Um, because I had conviction and I was a, a believer in Christ, now I'm aware of what I've done. Of course, the accuser of the brethren is working to destroy our identities and therefore our behavior, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just completely thought, well, I, I'm, I'm disposable now. And, um, and I numbed my, my emotions, I believe, from eight years old. And just from what you've said, I'm thinking there's no one you can talk to. Exactly. I mean, this was this is 1980s. For me, probably early 1980s when I, when I was eight or nine years old. And so you're going through and then you discover in the mid 80s, you're same sex attracted. You're not going to talk to anybody because the only thing I had ever heard anywhere on TV, in culture, in my church, in my family was that homosexuality was the worst possible thing someone can do. And so you find yourself with those desires. Where do you go? Yeah, it's one way to take it to hell. Yeah, exactly. And you were what age when that happened? Yeah, I was, um, uh, well, the, the, uh, the pornography, I was eight. Yeah, okay. Yes. Because I think you can trace it to that. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure there's ever been any study exhaustive enough mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to describe the 
awful destruction that pornography does. Mm -hmm. I've, I've mm -hmm. had Christian psychologists on, and mm -hmm. they said, that's the hard one. Yeah. That's the really... Yeah. There, there is deliverance. There is hope. Absolutely. But, but that's, that's harder than uh, other addictions. It, it is, and yet I know quite a few men personally, like close personal friends I'm in their lives, and myself included, that that is not a struggle. You know, I mean, now I, I obviously watch my eyes. There's a, there's any time I could be pulled, you know, by lustful thought or something like that. But as far as like entering into pornography and that kind of thing, I mean, God has yeah. healed Praise me God. such that that is not the draw like it used to be. Praise so and I know Lord. several other men that it's like they, they, they aren't going there any longer. Mm -hmm. It can be, God can Absolutely. free you. Absolutely. That, yeah. that's, I like the end of the story there. Yeah. But you know, King David said, I will set no wicked thing before yes. my eye. Yes. And, uh, in America, there's a lot of wicked things just right out there in the open. And yes. I think you have to take the stand mm -hmm. that David did. Said, I'm, Absolutely. I, I refuse to watch anything like that on TV or movie or violence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. want that in my so memory bank. You know? yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think too, you know, that we can talk more later, probably. Uh, but the um, we need a, we need help with that. So mm -hmm. I think w uh, where people fail is they say, "Well, I'm going to do this myself." You know, I'm going to guard my eyes myself, and mm -hmm. it's like, okay, great, do that. But we're going to be a lot more successful when we're inviting the Lord to empower us to do that. Mm -hmm. And when I'm being real with the people in my life mm -hmm. and saying, "I am being tempted with this. Would you walk with me? Yes. Would you check on me?" What do you think of me? You know, so much of my struggle was I was looking for masculinity because I'd pushed mine away and I needed other men in my mm -hmm. life saying, you know, Ken, your flavor of masculinity is different than his and his and mine, mm -hmm. but we're all unique. It's not cookie cutter. You know, you can, you can love music and still be a man, whatever it was, <laughs> right? And just say, you know, I see you. I see the courageous man that you are in so many ways and, 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 and affirm that. That helps me. Be, receive my identity, and therefore I'm not looking for my identity in someone else. That's some of the greatest stuff I've ever heard. Oh. Right there, right there. As far well, as I clamored to find it over many years. Yeah, as far as God. being a male and all. Yeah. Uh, you got the broader picture of it for sure. Okay, you were uh, very, very young when this happened. Mm -hmm. How did you proceed through your high school years, mm -hmm. and and at what point did um, you encounter the Lord mm -hmm. and as I mentioned at the top of the show, if you hadn't tuned in yet, this is a, a pastor with a wife and four children. So mm -hmm. um, I don't think anybody's going <laughs> to doubt your masculinity yeah. at this point. Well, that feels good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, you know, it was messy. So when, all those my years. Yeah. You, I mean, through, you have through quite, my a, teens. quite a long time there. Exactly. It was a long journey for me. You know, mm -hmm. I wrote the book, The Journey mm -hmm. Out, because it was that. It was, for me, about a 20 year journey. Mm -hmm. I believe that it doesn't have to take that long now for, for I don't think it would take me today that right. long, but there weren't many resources back then. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when I was about 13 or so is when I realized, well, I'm not like the others. When I'm 15 or 16, I have a wake up call. I watched a movie on TV and it was a kid just like me. And the end of the story, of course, Hollywood story is, you know, this is who you are. You have to embrace it. Yeah. That was, that was very scary mm -hmm. and gave me less faith for, for freedom from that. Um, but there were also there was a point in my teens where uh, a friend kind of made a sexual advance at me that I was not expecting and would not have been approving of because I'm trying to follow God despite trying my struggle, to. right? But when he just touched me all of a sudden and I, I felt like my masculinity really kind of for the first time was being affirmed. I don't know if that makes sense to your audience, mm -hmm. but um, it was more than sexual. This was like, I'm valuable mm -hmm. as a male. And that was hard to push away. Mm -hmm. And so, I, that, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling so guilty because this has went months long of this interaction back and forth. And yet I was feeling the affirmation. I wasn't getting my, the, some of my emotional needs felt like they were getting met mm -hmm. because of the sexual interaction. Mm -hmm. As you and I both know, mm -hmm. um, you don't meet emotional needs with sex. If you're trying mm -hmm. to fill, you know, that, right. that's a square peg in a round hole. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm really guilt ridden. And so by 17, I'm suicidal. And mm -hmm. um, only didn't end my life because I didn't want to destroy my family. Mm -hmm. uh, but cried out to, to God, um, n none of that's working until I finally write out nine pages of my pain one night. Just kind of got it all out 
expletives, everything, because I just had never been able to share. But all wasn't of this. that a very valuable thing? Oh, uh, I encourage everyone to. I mean, if we don't actually, the Lord told me several years ago, said, um, You'll never know unconditional love until you first shared your condition. So people go their whole lives never really receiving, receiving mm -hmm. God's healing mm -hmm. love and the unconditional love because they never have crossed that chicken line to share, this is exactly who this is I, who am. I am. Yeah. yeah, and when I did that with my youth pastor, he said, well, Ken, you know what? This is not, this is not who you are. You're not gay. You're struggling. And we're going to tell your parents. I told my parents that night we cried together for two hours. They were so sad that I'd been in my in their home and hadn't been able to tell them. Could you describe the relief? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it was out of darkness into his light. Of telling your mother and dad? Yes. I mean, just, the burden must have just dropped. Yeah, I have chills just remembering it. it because, you know, the, uh, deep inside, I knew how much they loved me. Mm -hmm. But over this issue... How you don't they? know how yeah. could they all of that and so when it actually happened i was able to receive that love and that was the beginning point so then i had you know five years of christian mm -hmm. uh, counseling which was i i mean i i was never suicidal after i was able to share also with my therapist this is what i'm where i really am and him Boy, you know get to give me grace this is so rich yeah it's so uh, there's so much that you've taught me and i i yeah. know our viewers are learning as well okay uh, because this is only a 30 minute show. Um, was there a point when you looked mm -hmm. at a girl and went, whoop? <laughs> <laughs> there was, I mean, the, the major change for me came from, I was, I experienced a physical healing in my physical body. Mm -hmm. And that was such a dramatic thing from a friend laying hands on me that, that I realized, oh my gosh, God is good. He cares about how I'm doing right now, how I feel. So I started pursuing intimacy with God in a whole new way. And I, I, you know, we're made in God's image. So if we want to know who we are, we need to look at Him. I started looking not at the problem, but at Him. And Thanks over time and mentoring, I one day look over at this, this lady I had started getting to know. And she looked so cute with the long hair and the, she was playing with it and the sparkly belt. And I couldn't take my eyes off of her. And I, that had never happened before. But I was captivated. Did so you step back her. and say, well, what happened? I did. I did. But I mean, I had, I had been so seeking that, you know, so see, I was like, Lord, I, I want to be able to be a, a, you know, a husband and a father and all of that. It was deep inside of me, but it had been so off the table. And so when I started realizing, well, I am by default opting to notice her, her beauty, I, it was the it most was wonderful natural. thing. It was natural. And, and, and there's a lot of harm that happens from people trying to work it up and mm -hmm. then you end up hurting some poor girl. And, but this was not that anymore. Right. This was, I am captivated by you. Uh, I'm talking to Ken Williams. You've got to get his book, The Journey Out. And I have not read, I usually read all the books, but I, I didn't have this one in time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had the website on the screen. Also, it's on Amazon, I'm sure, and mm -hmm, those mm -hmm. places. I'll give you a signed copy at thejourneyout.me. Okay, mm -hmm. because um, this is very educational. It's not just uh, mm -hmm. not just his story. Okay, how'd you meet your wife? <laughs> <laughs> we were in uh, the same church, and I was uh, one of the leaders of the young adult ministry there. And so she started coming, and uh, you know I was able to get to know her over a year that way by in the group. And that's where I realized I fell in love with the inside of her, and then started falling in love with the outside of her. Uh, did she have any hesitancy about uh, <laughs> this guy's past? I'm not so um, sure. Six weeks or so into the relationship, when we started dating, I felt like the Lord told me to tell her. And that's a whole divine story that we don't have time for right now about how the Lord made that it's clear. It's in here. It is in there. Okay. And, um, and so I opened up to her and uh, she's, she acted like everything was fine. We pull over on the road. She's like, I need to powder my nose. Goes in, has a panic attack in the bathroom. And, um, oh you know, cause she's like, I really like this guy. Yeah. And, but the Lord said to her right then, he said, don't you ever look at him that way again? Because I don't. And wow. so, you know, I, I told her, Hey, you can, there's a bunch of people who are current in my life. My pastors, my friends, you can talk to any of them, ask them any questions about the man that I am. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to put God first. I'm going to put you second. And we All went, things we went pass from there. Away. That's, I mean, that's what the Bible says. <laughs> Uh, don't want to don't want to make this sound real easy. This man was in the Word. You were in Romans. Yes. Uh, what was Romans Changed six through life. age nine? Yes. Yes. Uh, Romans, the mm -hmm. sixth chapter through the eighth mm -hmm. or ninth. Eighth. Eighth. Uh -huh. Yes. You 
practically memorized those right <laughs> yeah i mean i just read it over and over i mean when you start reading romans 6 and it starts talking about how we are no longer slaves to sin mm -hmm. do we believe that mm -hmm. i didn't believe that mm -hmm. if i'm being honest because that's what a homosexual is yeah i mean it's just, right if you're habitually living that life that's a sinful lifestyle and or and even i just didn't believe that i could be free from sin in general mm -hmm. and uh, hey uh, you know we all have to be humble and realize that apart from christ we are nothing but all Jesus, of us. Uh, all of us, but Jesus has paid that price. And I believe that he's changed our nature. Doesn't mean I can't sin. Mm -hmm. I certainly can. But I believe he's changed my nature mm -hmm. from that of a sinner to a saint. And, and, and so my default is no longer sin. My default is I'm a citizen of the kingdom. And occasionally mm -hmm. I sin and I repent and I get back and I get up and I keep going. And he has four children, uh, including a set of twins, which mm -hmm. I think is so special. <laughs> uh, do you ever look at them and just, oh, just, God, you're All so good. Yes. It's the most wonderful thing to just be able to do the mundane stuff of life, taking them, you know, from here and there, picking them up after school and things like that. And I'm like, wow, God, it's all a testimony of how big God is. Yes. And uh, you are an associate pastor with, is it called Bethel? Bethel Church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Redding, California, Redding, which is California. a very... Uh, well-known church mm -hmm. and a lot of great miracles. Yes. And we have seen God do incredible And you know, things. when I hear these things, I think uh, there's so many churches that lack that power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It takes it takes the power of God to take you from where you were to where you I are mean, sitting in that chair. Th that's how I ended up. Uh, yes, I mean, the Lord's power came into my life and His truth transform me by the renewing of my mind. Uh -huh. Now, uh, do you know, they're not all the same, but you uh, know others that have been set free and they're Many others. living a wonderful... Many others. We have a, a closed Facebook group of almost 3,000 people, over half of which have their own personal journey wow. out of LGBT. And there's there's a spectrum of the level of breakthrough there, but oh yeah, that book, uh, that cha the changed mm -hmm. book is full mm -hmm. of testimonies. Yes, we're completely out of time, uh, but I will be having him on another program at a later date, so uh, just keep watching Homekeepers. It's so wonderful to be able to bring you these marvelous testimonies. God's still on this throne. He hasn't, he hasn't gone anywhere. His power is just exactly the same. And if you have situations in your family that are breaking your heart. I hope this is a great encouragement to you. And I do hope that you will join me next time, friend, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.